After an incident that happened at home, I took a lot of different pills and I tried to kill myself. I grew up with just my mum and my sister and with that I never knew my dad and we were just a very small family. I was someone that was very quiet, I was someone that kept to myself a lot and that was I think the beginning of some of the problems that I had inside. It kind of stemmed from this insecurity of who I am or where I belonged. So if the people wanted me to be a bit loud, I would be louder. If the people wanted me to be funny, I would be funny. Whatever the situation demanded, I would be that because in my head I was thinking if I did this, that's how I would fit in. And then there was a point where I was around certain friends who started to steal. So because they stole, I also started to steal. And then obviously that brought problems at home. And as things got worse at home, I would then kind of lean on my friends even more. So then my friends, when they started to drink, I also wanted to drink. I never knew who I was, but then whatever was there was just kind of lost. I didn't even know what my favorite color was. I didn't know the things that I liked. And as I kept growing older, I noticed that I was more and more sad. I noticed that I had to make a conscious effort to try to smile. There was one instance, because I used to steal, I got excluded from school. And because I got excluded, my mum had to come in to school and there was a whole situation that happened from that. The moment we got home, my mum, she came home, she looked at my sister and she was really, really happy. She was speaking to her. But then she, the moment she looked at me, it's like I saw all the happiness that she had kind of leave her face. And then she looked at me and she just said, how can um, someone have so much joy and when they look at you, all the joy they have, leave them? And for me, when I heard that, sincerely, it really broke me because even though my relationship with my mum was never the greatest, I never expected to hear something like that from her. And when I heard it, it just made me kind of give up, to be quite honest. Whatever I was holding on to, whatever I was trying to kind of maintain in terms of appearances, it shattered in that moment because in my head I was thinking, if my mum, the only parent that I knew, who's meant to always love me. If she's given up on me, then what am I fighting for? Why am I still, what am I still doing here? So I remember after she said that, I remember going up the stairs and even I was crying and I was thinking, what else am I going to do now? Where else am I gonna go? What's, what's my plan? And I didn't have anything. So I remember the moment I got upstairs, I just thought, you know what? I'm going to take a lot of pills and I'm going to kill myself. I went to the drawer that we had all the medicine and I just started taking, taking it all. I didn't allow myself to think of how many I was taking. My aim was, I'm going to take this, go to sleep and die. And I remember I just laid in my bed and I cried until I started feeling like I was losing consciousness and hearing my mum's voice randomly so I could hear her in the distance calling me. And it was like it was kind of pulling me out of the unconsciousness that I had. So then she called me and I remember I felt really sick. I felt really dizzy so I couldn't even walk on my own. And I remember just kind of holding onto the walls, trying to walk to where she was. When I got downstairs, it was like it was a completely different person as if what had happened previously didn't happen. She was really loving, she was really happy. And I was very, very confused, but then I wasn't trying to show what I had done or what effect it was having inside of my body. But then after that, again, the dynamic of the family didn't change. So we just all kind of kept going with how things were up until a few years later when I then moved to university. I got myself into a relationship and that relationship, it was with someone that was a little bit older than me. And because I was still at that stage where it was as if I was experimenting in the world, it was like that relationship pushed me to do things that I never thought I would do. There was an instance where he took me home, he wanted to sleep with me. And for whatever reason that day, I said, no, I don't want to. And in that moment, it was like, he was really trying to force himself on me. And when that was happening, I remember being so scared, but I remember thinking, okay, God, I don't want to be this person that got raped. So I'm going to pretend that I want to do this, that I want to be a part of this, just so I don't have to be the person that was raped. From that point in my life, I'd say I'd hit rock bottom and even me, myself, I didn't know where I was trying to go. And that was the time where I was invited to the church. And I remember I was on my way to work and I saw two people approaching me. And in my head, I already planned, I don't want to talk to anyone, I'm trying to go to work. But for whatever reason, I stopped and I listened to what they said. And whatever they said, it made me want to go. So after that, I went to the church and I started attending the services. I could say at the beginning, I didn't really understand. I didn't really know exactly what I was looking for, but I knew that whenever I went to the church, whenever I started to attend the special services, it's like I could see things beginning to change inside of me. So at this point in the church, I was still learning about faith and I was interested in seeking for the Holy Spirit, wanting to have God inside of me as I'd heard. And one thing that I started to really understand was the need that I would have to sacrifice. So then I heard of the campaign of faith and when I heard of the campaign of faith it 
made me to be interested because I saw the testimonies, I saw the examples of other people who sacrificed, who gave everything that they had and they received the Spirit of God. And I wanted that for myself. And I'd say at that point, I really embraced what it was to sacrifice. So I started to let go of the grudges that I had inside. I started to let go of even the, the problems and the hate that I had towards my family, towards my mom. I started to let go of the friends that I had at the time. I started to let go of the bad habits. I placed it on the altar, including the things that were inside. And I was determined and saying to God, God, I refuse to leave this place without your Holy Spirit. So after I left the altar, I left certain and I kept seeking and I kept sacrificing and I kept searching. I wasn't afraid to search inside of myself anymore. A little while after, I remember I was seeking for the Holy Spirit and there came a point where it was a Sunday service and I remember that Sunday I had already determined, okay, I'm going to go to church and I'm going to receive the Holy Spirit. And I remember I just kept speaking to God and God told me, I'm here. And in that moment, I remember just being so, happy is not the word, but I just remember being so full of joy, full of this, this joy that I'd never experienced before that I just wanted to scream. I'm not a loud person, but I wanted to scream. I wanted to, to share it with the people that were around me to be able to be like, oh my gosh, this is the Holy Spirit. I have the assurance. And it was something that I can say I can never ever forget. From the moment of receiving the Holy Spirit, everything truly changed. And the Holy Spirit, I can say, has really led and guided my life. So much so that I'm living a life that I could never imagine that I would have lived. I'm successful, I'm growing in every single area of my life. I can see in, in my finances that things are growing, things, I'm in a role that I'd never imagined I would be able to work in and it's something that I'm very happy doing. Even in my family, it's like things are better, things have moved forward with my with the relationship with my mum. Things are so much better than the way they were. I don't look at her and hate her, I don't look at her and have any grudges. It's like there's actually peace and even she herself can see and has told me that she sees the difference inside of me all because of the Holy Spirit. And sometimes it's like I look back and I think there's such a big difference because I'm not someone that's depressed. I'm not someone that's sad. I'm not someone that's looking around thinking, okay, how can she end her life? It's like I look forward to life. I'm very happy with life. I'm very joyful. And even since then, I've been able to become an assistant in the Universal Church where I'm able to help others as well. My life right now doesn't compare. And also now I'm in a relationship with a man of God and I can see the difference and I can see a future with him. It is truly something that is of God. Today when I wake up, it's like I have a new appreciation for life. And when I look back, I could never imagine that the life that I'm living now is something that anyone, God or even the Holy Spirit could do inside of my life. But it's like I'm living a life that is literally out of this world.